What's up, everybody? We got some scary and creepy and interesting TikToks for everyone. Hopefully, everyone doing well. If you're new here and old here, like, comment, and subscribe. We going to get on to it. At Disney World, the company doesn't want you to see. If you look at a map of the park, there's a little green spot in the middle of Bay Lake. There's no description of what it is, and it's completely off limits to everyone, including employees. Around 20 years ago, this mysterious island was actually another Disney park called Discovery Island. You take a boat from shore, arrive at the island, and basically look at exotic birds. Fast forward to 1999, Animal Kingdom opens, and it's basically a bigger and easier to get to version of Discovery Island. This sparked the very quick decline of the island. Today, it's abandoned and in ruins, completely overrun by nature. It's also heavily guarded. If you're anywhere near Bay Lake, you can be assured that you're being watched. It makes you wonder if there's more to this island than Disney is. I have a theory about Ice Spice. Do you remember when we all found out what was going on with the Pussycat Dolls? Basically, their performances and their fame was an advertisement for adult services that they did. By the way, I think they were actually being trafficked, so no hate. And even if they were doing it consensually, still, like, get your bag, let's go. So back to Ice Spice. I think she's doing the same thing. I think she's advertising for her adult services. And that's why she's always talking about poop and farts, because she's showing the specific flavor fetish that she does and excels at. Because I've known a lot of adult workers, and to me, it definitely sounds like she is advertising her specific talents if this is true hopefully it's consensual but i don't know it's all speculation what do you think i think ice spice really out here like that the mars theory that there's aliens on mars nah there's a theory that mars uh. was the original planet that humans were from okay then something happened that we all had to fly to another planet and live on there used to be like civilization that lived on mars now back this uh -huh. on mars there's an element on the periodic table called xenon xenon yeah on earth is only found this is crazy is only found after a nuclear explosion no 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 oh shit. that's not even <laughs> the super mode button i said no <laughs> what the hell yeah. and it goes hand in hand now what if on mars there was a nuclear warfare destroyed the whole planet but people were able to escape just in time yeah landed on earth and they had to restart from nothing so we are the aliens we're the aliens what the hell yeah it's real shit like this element's called xenon it's prominent after nuclear explosion why if that's what really happened y'all like why if we like really like like we really we really like from mars and that's one reason aliens like you know what we can't have them running rampant in the universe it's their second time doing the same thing over and over again. You know, they say history repeats itself. We on league go somewhere else to do the same thing. Five worst supermarkets, according to the World Health Organization. Number five, Aldi. Although Aldi is known for its cheap products, it also offers items high in added sugars, unhealthy fats, and artificial ingredients. Number four, Little. Little's affordable offerings may be tempting, but there's also a range of less nutritious options, including sugary snacks, processed foods, and sugary drinks. Number three, 7-Eleven. While not a traditional supermarket, 7-Eleven has a reputation for offering an abundance of unhealthy snacks, sugary drinks, and processed fast food, which can get in the way of making healthier choices. Number two, Walmart. Walmart, one of the leading retailers, offers a wide variety of products, but is often criticized for stocking processed, high-calorie foods that can contribute to unhealthy eating habits. Number one is... Tell me in the comments who's number one. Subscribe to find out who's number one in our next video. That's crazy. He's just way at Pooey.
But is this Sleepy Joe? I thought it was gonna be like an alien or something in the sky. Is he crazy or is he like, it's something there that we just don't see. Like he see it though. And get them special contacts. Or do something to their mind for where they see. Oh no. See, I, I got low key a brow, bro. Don't do me like that. Like y'all see an alien like with a brow. Y'all be like, oh, don't, don't do me like that, bro. That's crazy. That's somebody mama. Probably. Bro, I just got an idea. One Voldemort is based off an alien. Wow. So let's start from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You say it's a 90 year cover up. Just about, yeah. 90 years. 1933 was the first recovery in Europe, in uh, Magenta, Italy. They recovered a, a partially intact vehicle. There's a spiritual component there that I, I don't fully understand. Um, so yes, that story bothers me. And I think the last thing I'll say that one of the reasons that we've had all the, these disclosures and all these, what, 10 whistleblowers at this point, and it hasn't really become front page news. Part of it's suppression. You know, parts of the government don't want you to know about it, but part of it is the public can't deal with it. It's too far out. The Italian government moved it to a secure uh, air base in Italy for the, the rest of kind of the fascist regime until 1944, 1945. And, you know, the uh, Pope Pius XII back channeled that. So the Vatican um, was involved. Yeah, and told the Americans what the Italians had, and, and we ended up scooping it. So let me be very clear about this. You're saying that the Catholic Church, the Vatican, they know about the existence of non-human intelligence on this planet. Certainly. What is a demon? I think most people would, would, would submit to you that a demon is some sort of supernatural being that is based in some sort of religious doctrine uh, and is usually, you know, malevolent to some degree. Are these aliens demons or extraterrestrials or interdimensional beings or us from the future? What's your thoughts on what this phenomenon could be? Everybody wants zombies to happen so bad. I better be able to run. I only could care about like maybe like two to four of y'all. Like I better run, be able to run 10, 20 minutes. One had the plague in Oregon this month. That's right, the same plague that killed about half of Europe back in the 1300s. There is good news and bad news. Pay attention because this will be on the test. What is regurgitative transmission and what is the name of the bacterium that causes the plague? Oregon health officials believe the person got infected by their symptomatic pet cat. Their close contacts and the cat were contacted and given medication. The bad news is that it's true, the plague is not gone. It's still hanging around, mostly in animal reservoirs. The good news is that nowadays the plague can be treated with prompt administration of the right type of antibiotics. However, if left untreated, fatality rates for the plague range between 30% to nearly 100%, with untreated pneumonic plague being almost universally fatal if not treated quickly. What causes the plague? It's the bacterium Yersinia pestis. The CDC categorizes Yersinia pestis as a Category A bioterrorism agent alongside the likes of smallpox and anthrax. The plague can manifest in a few different ways. Number one, bubonic plague, where you get swollen lymph nodes, also known as buboes. Septicemic plague, if the bacteria gets into your bloodstream. And pneumonic plague, if it gets into into your lungs. One type can turn into the other. For example, you can start with bubonic and end up with either septicemic or pneumonic. Symptoms of the plague can start anywhere from one to eight days after infection. How does the plague spread? There's three main ways. Number one, being bitten by an infected flea. Number two, direct contact with infected tissues or fluids. Or number three, inhalation of infected respiratory droplets from someone with pneumonic plague. You may have heard that bubonic plague is spread by rodents, which is partially true. That's where the fleas come in. When fleas are infected with Yersinia pestis, the bacteria can grow into a dense biofilm in their gut. This can cause some something called regurgitative transmission. When that infected flea bites another animal and tries to swallow the blood, the biofilm may partially block some of that swallowing. So they regurgitate some of the blood back up to the site of the bite, carrying some of those bacteria from the biofilm with it. This can transfer the Yersinia pestis into the animal that it was just biting. Fun fact, the first quarantine was established in response to the Black Plague in what is now- Man, whoever made the first quarantine, they need a statue. Where they statue at?
Dubrovnik, Croatia, back in the year 1377. Unless they was good. If they was good people, they should they deserve a statue. Forced a plague quarantine of 30 to 40 days. Punishments for citizens breaking the rules of quarantine ranged from fines to physical torture to cutting off an ear. Why has the Dutch government, a guy called Rutter, the Prime Minister, completely owned by the World Economic Forum, uh, Klaus Schwab, why has he just announced that the Netherlands, the second biggest exporter of food in the world, is targeting farmers to destroy them and get them off the land, which is where all these farming protests in the Netherlands have come from. People depend on you for what's left of the food. You control them. Where food is abundant and cheap, you do not control them. Where energy is cheap and abundant, you do not control them. Scarcity equals dependency equals control. And that's why they're targeting the food chain, they're targeting the energy supply, they're targeting everything. The World Economic Forum predicts that by 2025, 97 new roles related to technology will emerge. This is due to the partnership between algorithms, genes, and humans. This underscores a massive growth of the role of technology in jobs and job skills across all sectors. So I'll give two examples. So one is that uh, people eat too much meat, right? And if they were to cut down on their consumption on meat, then they would, uh, it would actually really help the planet. Uh, but people are not willing to give up meat. Yeah, you know, some people will be willing to, but other people, they may be willing to, but they sort of, they have a weakness of will. They say, wow, this, this steak is just too juicy. I can't do it. I, I'm one of those, by the way. So, you know, but so here's the thought, right? So it turns question like what are we supposed to eat then like is it are we supposed to be vegan we supposed to eat meat like what 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 are we supposed to do like let me know make something that's just better like if it's a better option i leave animals alone personally it ain't that deep for me about that we know a lot about so there we have these intolerance to uh so i for example i have milk intolerance I'm, uh and there's some people are intolerant to crayfish so possibly we can use hu human engineering to make it the case that we're intolerant to certain kinds of meat to certain kinds of bovine uh bovine proteins and there's actually analogs of this in life there's this thing called the long star tick where if it bites you you will become allergic to meat uh, i can sort of describe the mechanism so that's something that we can do through human engineering we can kind of uh, ad possibly address really big world problems through human engineering human engineering guys what does that mean so they gonna do something to alter us to where like oh well no longer eating no meat dogs he he uh, opened up the world economic forum and they were very excited they had experts there and everything uh, John Kerry talked, uh, and Al Gore talked about a new satellite system that is up that's going to be able to pinpoint who is who has a too big of a carbon footprint. You know, it's great. It's great. I voted. You're going to be on the highway drive and they're going to, that magnet going to come doop, and take you right where they want you to be. He ain't supposed to be driving this. For that, didn't you? Here they are talking about some new exciting technology that I think you are going to love. We're developing through technology through the technology. ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. Oh my God. What does that mean? That's, <laughs> yeah. Where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? Right. What are they consuming on the platform? Mm -hmm. So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm, Stay tuned. Wow. We don't have it operational yet, but uh. this is something that we're working on. That sounds scary. They could do whatever they want. You're doing too much. You got to listen. I just got to pray. Klaus Schwab's statements about oh, nothing and be happy, and the statements by Bill Gates and all the World Economic Forum, Davos, Billionaires Boys Club about what they want for the rest of humanity and it's alarming it's troubling a lot of those proposals are just antithetical to everything that the united states believes in and i think it's really important for a president to draw that line and to look at any kind of support that we give to those organizations and end it my
My name is Jane Goodall. My age is 80. My job is giving people hope. If I'm allowed to change a few things, uh, if I just have this magic power, I would like to, without causing any pain or suffering, reduce the number of people on the planet because there's too many of us. It's a planet of finite resources and we're using them up. But what I really, really, really would love to change is the unsustainable lifestyle of everybody else. We just greedy. Um, it was this manga I was reading. So basically it was a dude, he regressed. He and then this other dude swapped by it. So he became the martial arts king and the other dude became the sorcerer. But he was trying to free all the elves, the dwarves, because humans was looking at them as less than, right? Even though the dwarves make the best technology and everything. Like, so um, for the most part, when it comes to armor and all that other equipment stuff. Well, but um, so the dude, when he met him, he talked to him. He was like, hey, so you are because he knew stuff that nobody else should know. Like the dude basically had a fake beard. He didn't tell nobody like his beard was fake. He had a, a put on. Um, and then the dude said, yeah, you can't force your ideals on people. You will have to willingly convince them and show them that the errors of their ways is wrong. And, and that's why I think they doing. They trying to force instead of showing. And when you keep force, eventually you're going to have to force project which was called team halo where we trained scientists um around the world and some doctors on tiktok and we had tiktok working with us and um these scientists who had virtually no following to start with um got verified ticks um they started bringing people in their community into their labs into their offices and answering their questions engaging with them um, it really took off, and many of them became kind of like national media go-to um, advisors, uh, and you know, so... Nobody will be safe if not everyone. So they made industry plants for doctors? Nobody is vaccinated. As a Klaus Schwab, I say this. How dare you! <laughs> and my future and the future of all children so what should you do as long as Klaus Schwab is free no one is safe it's kind of radical just said, that's also of course true with COVID right we are all only as healthy as our neighbor is on our street and our city and our region and our nation and globally and did we solve that like did we actually manage to vaccinate everyone in the world no so highlighting water as a global commons and what it means to work together and see it both out of that kind of global commons perspective but also the self-interest perspective because it is it does have that parallel it's not only important but it's also important because we haven't managed <laughs> to solve those problems but which had similar attributes and water is something that people understand you know climate change is a bit abstract some people understand it really well some understand it a bit some just don't understand it water every kid knows how important it is to have water when you're playing football and you're thirsty you need water so there's also something about really getting citizen engagement around this and really in some ways experimenting with this notion of the common good can we actually deliver this time in ways that we have failed miserably other times and hopefully we won't keep failing on the other things but anyway well, recently klaus schwab announced that he's going to be stepping out from the world economic forum january of 2025 and there's a leading candidate that may replace him whose books have sold 45 million copies in 65 different languages his name is yuval harari he's been called the brain of klaus schwab his books have been recommended by bill gates obama and many others this is a guy that's known by many of the world leaders prime ministers he wrote a book called sapiens sold over 21 million copies homo deo sold over 9 million copies 21 lessons for the 21st century sold over 5 million copies He's someone you ought to know. Do anyone know about him? And if he's the brain for Klaus, I mean, he probably on a similar path. Your um, annual global risk report makes for a stunning and sobering read. For the global business community, the top concern for the next two years is not conflict or climate. It is disinformation and misinformation, followed closely by polarization within our societies. These risks 
are serious because they limit our ability to tackle the big global challenges we are facing. Right, but they, they, they like um, misleading um, everybody. I, I just think, why don't these news networks make a segment during, and they could sit up there and say, look, this was going on, bring in an expert. They could talk about it. Hey, this is what we get, but we know they lie. So it gets sticky. We got, we just need a new way of doing things. You know, some new leaders, people we could trust. It ain't nobody we really trust. One person might trust them, but the next person don't. Of course, if you look at all the challenges, we can speak about the multi-crisis, economic, political, social, and ecological, an institutional crisis. But actually, what we have to confront is a deep, systemic, and structural restructuring of our world. And this will take some time. And the world will look differently after we have gone through this transition process. Politically, the driving forces for this political transformation, of course, is the transition into a multipolar world, which has a tendency to make our world much more fragmented. And for this reason, events. Talking about fragmented, I believe it's the media. Like in America, we got the. Blue versus red, we got we got a lot of verses over here. And then UK, I saw it was people versus Muslims. It was just a lot of stuff going on, man. Like this one. So G20. And, and I ain't trying to be disrespectful. Like we got a lot of information. The Vatican, everybody got stuff on religion. We gotta start united people. Just give out the truth. Hey, you it's what we what we gathered, uh Sorry, like you know what I'm saying? Like it just keep it pushing. Except with I don't know. They say it's gonna get chaotic with y'all think. And so on are the very important connectors to avoid a too great segmentation. A lot of things in terms of making it cheaper, faster, more accurate, I've found it's a real productivity increase. Likewise, for coders, you're seeing 40, 50% productivity improvement, which you know means you can get programs sooner, you can make them higher quality, make them better. So mostly what we'll see is that the productivity of white collar will go up. AI can be used for cyber attacks. It can be used to design a bioterrorism weapon. So far, every technology we've come up with, we've managed to keep them under control. And so the idea that there's a lot of talk getting government people to understand AI. You know, but what happens when we can? What happens when we can't and no longer just control what we think we could control. You know, could it be something where it's almost too addictive to sit there and, and talk to it? You know, what should the guidelines be? The AI makes it easier to generate information. It underscores the need to say, okay, what's the good part of social media and what's the part either for young people or misinformation that regulations could reduce? Everybody looking for a zombie situation, it seemed like we might create one with the energy. I don't know, the human consciousness. You know there might be a crashed UFO underwater off the coast of Sweden? It's called the Baltic Sea Anomaly, and in 2011, explorers discovered this bizarre object on the seafloor. When they returned to study it more, their equipment strangely stopped working when they got within 650 feet of it, and it would turn back on again when they backed off. It's around 200 feet wide and 26 feet tall, and it appears like it could be man-made. Its circular shape and angular patterns on it has led many to believe that it could be an alien spaceship. However, most scientists agree that it's probably just a glacial deposit. But what do you think it is? Let me know what you think in the comments. Hopefully everyone enjoyed the video. If you made it this far. Please like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe. Hopefully you have a good day.